Hi, thanks for having me here to speak today. Um, I'm going to talk about involving children in research, and I've started with a quote from Wordsworth, uh, a poem about a child being the father of the man. Could equally have started with lines from a Whitney Houston song on, I believe children are the future, teach them well, let them lead the way. Because what I'm going to talk about today is children leading research. We were all children once, and I think it's really important to recognise that how we treat children and how we behave as children influences how we act as adults. So really, it's just about when and how we let children lead and whether that's a good idea. So first things first, it's really important to be childish. Everyone enjoys being childish in different ways. There's a great iconic image of Einstein with his tongue out taken when he was 72, showing that anyone can be childish in any situation. There's lots of ways you can be childish, and I could give you lots of examples, but we've all seen competitive parents in playgrounds, Lego building competitions, where, ch where the adults take a lot more pleasure than the child. But what is it about children that we want to harness? What are the childish qualities we're looking for? So I've put some examples. We always talk about children being naturally inquisitive. They've got a, a desire for discovery. So when you see very young children, you can see them often exploring the world around them, dropping things, watching how things happen, playing in the bath. You see them when they discover that their toes are attached to the rest of their body. Anything like this, it's just that inbuilt, they want to know why. We've also got a couple of other childish things about being adaptable to change and also quite open-minded. When I was planning this talk, I thought, oh, I could come on the stage and do something childish. I've got so many filters that stop me doing that because I'm an adult and I just think, oh no, I'd be too embarrassed, I can't do that because I've got that sense. But otherwise, children will quite often come and do things and not be fearful. And I think the fearlessness is really critical to what I'm gonna, the message I'm going to give you today. Because there's a couple of examples of fearless children here who've campaigned. So Malala campaigned to get education for women and that was fearless. And Harry Mosley, a story closer to home, who had a brain tumour, decided he'd raise awareness of this condition and managed to raise £650,000. So I think it's really important that we harness that fearlessness. When we're doing research, we're stepping into the unknown. So it's quite an important step to take to be brave and a little bit fearless. So I've shared some examples here of children who are fearless and, and great leaders in their field. But ideally, I'm talking about research. So how do we help children and young people become experts and leaders in research? There's lots of ways you can do this. So one of the simple ways was an American company, and they asked children, they gave them a statement, because sometimes you have to facilitate work with children, saying, if I could invent something that would help a lot of people, it would be. And I looked at these, and some of them uh, struck a chord. So there's one here. I would invent a medicine to cure cancer. That's giving children a facility to say what they'd like to do, what they'd like to research. It's quite um, a nice story, and it's good. I work in children's medicines, so obviously this one struck a chord with me, and I'm going to talk a little bit more on that later. Some of the other topics that they suggested were uh, a robot to do chores, um, flying cars, and one of my particular favourites was a, a hat that dogs could wear so the owners would know what they were thinking. Not sure how many people it would help, but I quite like the creativity there. So this second one, actually, that I'm going to share with you was really pertinent to me, and I think this really highlights um, the uniqueness children could bring to your research. So again, it's got a medical theme. Uh, they want to create a medicine that would help people with mental illness. And what this child's put here, they've put some really key details in, which is the type of research we want to harness. So they've thought that the actual aspects of the illness that is important, they've highlighted what's important to them and what we should be considering. They've also said that the medicine should be a chocolate bar, so they've recognised the problem that even when you give people medicines, they don't want to take them. So this child's really given an insight into what they should be doing. This is a really simple exercise that lets children explore scientific ideas, but it's not helping them to do research, they're just coming up with an idea. So I've got a couple of other examples where it's been taken a step further. So this is a big story. You don't have to read it all, but you can if you like, um, about an academic researcher who works in the area of drug discovery. He's trying to find um, new drugs to target cancer. 
So at the dinner table one evening, he's talking to his daughter and family about his research. And his daughter said, when I had a sore throat, I took an antibiotic and you said it would kill the germs. So why don't you use an antibiotic to kill cancer cells? So the father took this back into his research lab. His father's uh, Michael Lasante, Did the experiments and found the results. So he listened to his daughter. It showed promise. But what I really like about this story is he credited his daughter as part of the research team in the output. One of the authors listed there is Camilla Lissanti, who's eight. And she's actually credited as providing the initial idea for the study. So not only did he listen, he acted upon it and took her on the journey. And I think that's really important. This is a story, again, taking it a step further. An academic, Bo Lotto, um, went to Devon and worked with children aged eight to, aged eight to 10 and talk to them about bees. Um, just to really facilitate research, he asked them to think, what do we want to know about bees? And the children in the class came up with a few ideas, and he found that their ideas matched what the leading experts were trying to find at that time. So he helped them then to progress one of their ideas, conduct an experiment, and again write it up. All of the authors are credited in the output. They wrote it themselves, and it's written in a format that starts once upon a time. And it's a really great piece of research. They could come up with the ideas and conduct the experiment in that facilitated environment to the same quality as other researchers and get it published in outputs. So it shows that it can be done and it can make real, a real difference. It's really important to talk about ethics. So we talk about children involving children. There's the old adage, never work with animals or children. And I think once you've met an ethics board, you might even enhance that one. So a lot of people say, oh, it's really difficult to work with children. You have to do lots of paperwork, or it'll be really complicated. I can't say that it's not. But sometimes you have to think about the research you're doing. And actually, I work in children's medicines. I'm trying to make sure that children have access to evidence-based and age-appropriate medicines. The reasons why they don't is probably a TED talk for another day. But I'm working on something that so fundamentally affects children, it would almost be immoral not to involve them in my research. So again, according to UN Convention, if you're doing anything that affects children, they should be involved. And there's not much research that doesn't affect children, I'm afraid to say. So we should probably all be tackling this. So I'm going to um, move on a little bit to talk more about the work that I've done and how I've involved young people. So I said to start with a work in children's medicines. I work for the Clinical Research Network for Children, and this is a body of clinicians, academics, and thankfully, we've got groups of young people as part of our organization. One of the great things about the work is what the young people do. Typically, people are talk about young people being involved in clinical research, and there's a nervousness, the ethics of it. And this is one of the very great examples of research conducted by young people to tackle this. So I'm going to show you a video. Um, of some young people. They went out onto the streets of Liverpool to talk to people about whether children should or shouldn't be involved in clinical trials. Um, the sound quality is not great, but it's got a good message. Um. That's your, 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 your future. I think it's good that children take part, could take yeah. part in medical research. Yeah. No, but I suppose it's necessary. I don't think I'd let my child do a research trial. That's me. No, that's just me. It's going to move on because that was a really powerful piece of just really simple research of talking to people to show the highlights of the views that changed. This was a focus of a meeting that was held in the Science Museum in London for Generation R, which is Generation Research, where young people wanted to inform clinical research what they thought was important. They actually opened the whole meeting showing that video and they showed it to some really powerful people in the room. It gave them an opportunity to say why it was important for them to do other pieces of work and they've actually conducted other studies and made videos following themselves, taking part in clinical trials to show people what it actually means to the child and what children could get out of it, as well as the whole family. 
So it's given them an evidence base on which to try and create more educational support for people involved in trials. The whole generation art was really good because it got young people together and it told them that, you know, adults, as adults, we don't know what young people want. And what they want out of certain areas of medicine aren't what we think they want. And it really gave them a voice to make sure that we, that we listen to the children and young people when we're de designing medicines. It also helped them develop as individuals. They were able to present and share their experiences on a really big stage. I wanted to share this picture because this is the young person's group based at Birmingham Children's Hospital and it would be uh, neglectful of me not to show them. This is some of the work that they've done and they're just holding up signs there on what um, being involved in clinical research means. These people, I'm really hopeful, are going to be research leaders in the future. When we work with them on research, they help us design and develop clinical work in the UK. They will look at anyone's ideas and give them the feedback from a young person's view. They are also then involved in the project, making sure that the results, that the trial is designed so that it fits around family life, that the young people are on board to influence it on every stage, and they're involved in the outputs. These young people have really influenced a lot of the clinical research that's going on today. It's also important to share with you, anyone who's been inspired and wants to involve young people and children in research, there are groups that exist that you can go to. There's lots of different, you don't have to go through the logistics of setting it all up. There's science clubs in most schools. There's loads of resources of young people's groups where they're looking for people to go and talk to them and engage them in processes. The key message is don't treat them as subjects. They've got to be part of the research team. That's what they'll tell you. So some of the things that we've done from the university based on our interactions is really about the medicine side of the, of the research. So what we've got here is various projects where we've been looking at the design of age-appropriate medicines. So we can do studies in schools um, about designing the best medicine. We take these studies and we actually present them back to the relevant clinicians, to the pharmaceutical industry and to the funding bodies. We can go into schools and do experiments to make sure that children and young people know the safety of medicines, about what medicines they should take in terms of tablet size and shape. You can run that in a classroom where they can actually do the experiment, collect the results and share it. And then we take that data as well and we can pool it, get bigger populations and actually get a really good picture about what children and young people think about medicines. So from my point of view, being able to work with children and involving them in the research has enabled me to be really childish, which is always a good thing. It's really opened doors to research, given me a new way to talk to pharmaceutical industry. Um, it's allowed me to do a lot of things that benefit the university, my own career, and to come and talk at things like this. So at the start, I asked the question, why should children be leading research projects? And the last slide's been easy for me, because when you channel everything that all the young people say to you, the easy answer that they'd give you would be a simple, why not? Thank you very much.